Hi guys, here's a little tutorial about compositing. First thing is, it's a lot easier to composite shots that aren't moving. I can create a hold by clicking on the Retime tool here and choosing Hold, and then this shot will freeze while I do my compositing, but it'll still move before and after. Another way to do this is select the frame that you want to add to your project and then press Option F. Now the simplest way of all to composite is just find another shot you want to add, press Q to connect it to the other video clip, and then just resize it. And then you can position it wherever you want to on the screen. This is super easy. It's a way to make a frame within a frame. You can also resize both of the shots, making them smaller, and then position them wherever you want on the frame. Um, this is easy, but it's not really a great way to composite. Another super easy way to composite is click on this little button next to the Transform tool and then select Crop. You can crop each one of your video layers and just make the layer smaller or differently shaped. And now if I connect another shot, like this one of Jack Black, I can just put it underneath the other clip and then resize it, position it where I want it to go, and make a composite this way. Real simple. And after I finish positioning this, there's still a noticeable dividing line between these two shots, this hard edge here that I don't like. And there's no way to feather it using the crop tool. So I'll show you some other ways to do this. The next method is using a mask. In the effects browser, click on masks, and this time I'll choose shape mask. This adds a rectangular mask to the shot, and I can resize it and adjust the amount of feathering easily here in this window. When I do this, it looks much smoother. I don't see any dividing line between these two shots. But something you should always think about when you're compositing several shots together is color. These two shots don't really match, so I'm going to do some adjustment here, desaturate this shot of Jack Black, maybe make him look a little less red until it kind of matches, and that makes it just sort of look like they fit together better. It's Another often really hard to judge how good something looks. You might need to play, to play around with green screen shot you want to use. So if you have a green screen so shot, called just light drag wrap, the or on top of it, spill contrast, knows what to do. Sometimes you have to adjust mm, my selection, affect the smoke more and so often than you have to click things. on matte tools the smoke to completely and disappear, adjust but I don't things want it to like look green shrink or purple either. And you can kind of adjust and, the way that um, soft looks here until, until you don't see any sharp edges or anything like that around your object. It takes always a little bit of fussing around and playing around with it. Okay, well first I want to flip the gun around the opposite way. So under distortion, there's an effect called flipped, and that will make it point the other way. And, um, and then I'm going to play around with positioning, and um, after that, what it really needs is some color grading. Since this is a night shot, I'm going to bring down the exposure significantly, both the highs and the mids, maybe even the shadows of the global, and that looks a little bit better, uh, still maybe a little bright, but definitely a lot better. Keep in mind that you don't need a green screen shot to try chroma keying. If you have a solid color, especially something like a blue sky, you can often use the keyer to get rid of the sky, like I'm going to try to do in this shot here. So I'll add the keyer, and then with the selection tool, if I hold down shift, I can select more and more areas of the background that I want to be transparent. And if I do this a couple times, holding shift down, I can get rid of a lot of the background behind this guy. 
I can also just use the crop tool to cut some of the parts of this shot off that I don't want, like the lamp and this stuff over on the other side. And then when I add a background behind here, it doesn't look too bad considering what I started with. Next, let's talk more about the Luma keyer. I have this kind of crappy composite of a fire and a house, but suppose I want it to be in the shape of this woman's head. I'm going to add that shot. It helps a lot if it's a silhouette. I'm going to resize it so that it fills the whole frame and I don't see any of the fire around the edges. And once I do that, I'm just going to add the Luma keyer. Right away, Final Cut Pro goes after the dark area of the shot. And this isn't terrible looking. Um, if I don't want this white background, I can simply try color grading it. I can adjust the exposure of the white area. I can change the color and make it match maybe the visual design of my project. So that's one way to use a Luma keyer with silhouette type shots like this. I tried using an image mask with this same clip, but the problem is the silhouette clip has both black and white or white and fire. And so when I used it as a mask, it still gave me a full screen image. I realized what I had to do was create an alpha layer or a transparent image of the woman's cutout or the woman's silhouette and then use that as an image mask. Here's how I did that. I took the silhouette shot, added a Luma keyer to it. This made the black area transparent. And now when I add image mask to my house on fire compound clip, then select this shot of the woman, it is a cutout with only one layer, and I can invert it, and now I have my awesome house on fire woman. Pretty cool. While I was looking at this shot of the house, I realized that the black door might really work well with a Luma keyer. So I added a Luma keyer to the house and then adjusted it. And sure enough, with a little bit of playing around, I was able to get the fire inside the house. Um, I did a little bit more tweaking here. I did some color grading. I made the house a little darker and I made the fire a little brighter. I think I enlarged the house a little bit more and eventually I got it to where it looked kind of good. Here's another really simple trick I thought of when I saw this door. I'm just going to add draw mask and then draw around the door frame. It's a pretty simple rectangle. I think I might try to save some of the plants by kind of zigzagging around them a little bit. Um, but um, once I draw a mask, it doesn't do anything until I connect the dots and go all the way back to my starting and place. And then I have to click on Invert Mask because I want the house and not the door. Once I've done that, I can put something in this space, like this shot of this guy. And I know it looks a little goofy right here, but um, with a little bit of finagling, color grading, positioning, I can make this look kind of interesting, I think. I did the same thing with this window here, because it's nice and square, but when I add another clip behind it, it looked a little too fake and obvious. It didn't really match very well. Then I noticed that up here in the inspector under draw mask, there's a control that says fill opacity. That adjusts the opacity of just the mask so I can get some of the window screen back and that starts to look really kind of believable. Finally, one more type of compositing to talk about. Like you see here in Black Mirror, these are really just cutouts 
of video layers. And you can do that really easily by using the Draw Mask tool. All you have to do is apply Draw Mask to a clip and then start drawing a shape. Your mouse pointer changes into this pen tool and you always have to connect the dots back to the beginning. As soon as you do that, you cut out a chunk of video. If I do this several times in a row, I can create several different shapes and then arrange them somehow on the screen, uh, hopefully in some kind of visually pleasing way. And there's no limit to how many layers you can do this way. You can cut out any kind of shape you want, like I'll make a little star here. And when you have feathering all the way off, you get nice sharp edges and uh, you can have fun with these little elements like little uh, building blocks or tiles that you can put any place you want. If you want these layers to appear one at a time, just stagger the clips in your timeline. Then when you press play, they'll appear one at a time. Bang, bang, bang. You can then add keyframes, make these cutouts move, make them get bigger, make them go off the edges of the screen and disappear. There's all kinds of things you can do with this fun tool. Hope this was helpful, guys. Bye.